Good afternoon. Thanks for joining Family Caregiver Alliance for Caregiving Through the Holidays. I'm Calvin Hu, Education Coordinator at FCA and your host. For four decades, FCA has been working across the Bay Area and the nation to improve the well-being of family caregivers. We offer support through consultations, classes, workshops, publications, retreats, research, and advocacy. If you'd like to learn more about us or access our online tool, FCA Care Journey, please visit caregiver.org. Now for some quick housekeeping. During the webinar, your phones or mics are going to be muted, so if you have any questions, you can ask them by using the chat style question box on your screen. We'll answer as many questions as we can at the end of the webinar. And finally, uh, we're going to be asking you to give us a little bit of feedback after the webinar ends. We use this to help shape future programs, so I'd like to thank you all in advance for filling those out. So today I'd like to welcome our presenter, Patty Callahan. Patty directs the National Family Caregiver Support Program of the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging for the agency's eight county service area. She has been providing education and consultation to family caregivers since the program was implemented back in 2001. Before joining the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging, Patty provided clinical social work services in a variety of medical settings, which included the Ohio State University Medical Center, the Columbus AIDS Task Force, Hospice of Central Ohio, and in nursing facilities for Parkside Behavioral Health Care. Patty is a licensed independent social worker in the state of Ohio, and she received her Master's of Social Work degree from the Ohio State University. So now that you know a little bit more about our guest, I'd like to turn things over to Patty. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone, wherever you happen to be. Uh, this is Patty Callahan. Um, I so um, appreciated um, the invitation by the Family Caregiver Alliance to present this webinar uh, because I'm, I'm a true, firm believer that the holidays are really for savoring uh, rather than just, just surviving them. Um, if you're a caregiver, I know some days it probably feels like putting one foot in front of the other, other is about all you can manage. And then along comes the holidays and, and you have a lot of extra activity compressed into a short, very, very short period of time. And it's loaded with a lot of anticipation um, and expectations. And so sometimes um, at that point, you may be wondering how in the world you're going to get through all of this. If you're caregiving, um, the key uh, to enjoying the holidays is really uh, to be able to accept that there may need to be some changes in how you celebrate. Um, and throughout the holidays, it's just really important uh, to keep front and center that, um, that what, what's really doable and comfortable for you. Um, so let's talk about expectations a little bit. Um, next slide. Okay. Um, you know, um, expectations really are what can drive us sometimes uh, beyond our, our healthy limits. And um, and that's um, where we need to maybe sometimes really focus on uh, what's really realistic uh, to expect um, of yourself, um, of your loved one, your family, and the holiday celebration itself. Um, you know, for yourself, I think it's important to um, accept that you can't do it all, do it all perfectly, all of the time. And in there, notice that word all. Um, it's an absolute, and absolutes are some, rarely are they realistic. Um, it's, and it's usually not all or nothing. Uh, there's usually some, some middle ground there. So, um, you know, it's I think it's important to keep in mind that um, you know, if you are needing some help through the holidays, um, that you put it out there that you do need some help, that that's never, ever a weakness. Um, it's a sign that uh, you recognize your limits, and I think that's healthy and, and smart. Um, if you do ask for some help through the holidays, um, it's important to just let family, friends, whoever you're asking, um, know specifically what kind of help you need. Um, and then accept genuine offers of help. Um, whatever you're planning, um, you know, it may not be the same as years past, um, and that, that's truly okay. Um, and it's surely understandable uh, to feel some loss or some nostalgia uh, when maybe a long-standing holiday tradition just can't be maintained. 
But, you know, it can really be interesting and fun to change things up a bit. Um, and um, that actually might enliven the holidays. And then for your loved one, um, I think, you know, um, they may have some expectations of their own for the holidays. And um, so I think that there it's important to ask what he or she would like from the holiday. Um, don't assume. Um, and um, and then if something that um, they're kind of wishing for is just maybe on the edge of manageable, take a look at it. But if it's not manageable, um, then let them know um, gently and discuss perhaps some other um, options, uh, kind of brainstorm with them. You know, we'll, we'll look at, at another way to do this. Where your family is concerned, I'm, I always say assume nothing. Um, you know, they may not have even given one thought uh, to how the holiday um, plans will affect you. Um, they may not offer help, um, and sometimes that's because they really don't know your needs. Um, or um, they may be truly unwilling to help. And I always think it's important that if you are specific in letting folks know uh, what you need from them and they don't come through, then back off and drop it. Um, you know, this is about preserving your, your energy and time, and you're using up sometimes a lot of precious energy just um, you know, really letting uh, the frustration fester um, and better to just let it go. Um, but then you adjust your plans so that uh, the holidays are manageable for you. Um, that's, that's where it needs to go. And, you know, the, the expectations are often set up by the word should. Um, and so um, my one piece of uh, my little mantra there is to let go of the should. Um, you know, that that really is sometimes a word that sets us up for, um, you know, becoming more stressed. Okay, um, next. So in planning for your holiday celebrations, um, you know, I wanted to give you a little bit of a mini template for just kind of thinking through um, your planning. Um, and since you're on this webinar today, um, you obviously are a bit of a planner and and have some time here to perhaps um, think about some changes and implement those into your holidays. Um, and again, this is about preserving your time, your energy, and reducing stress. So um, first of all, what activities uh, do you truly want to preserve in your holidays? Uh, what are your favorites? And then what is it going to take um, to, to make that happen um, and think that through for yourself and for your loved one? You know, maybe it's bringing in some, um, some extra respite care. Um, maybe it's, um, you know, making some accommodations for travel. What, what is it going to take to, to make this, this actually happen, this, this um, observance perhaps that um, is so important to you? You know, maybe it's a religious service, um, uh, and then maybe um, you know if you're taking if your loved one is able to go, uh, then maybe um, you need to arrange some special transportation ahead of time, some things like that. And then, uh, what would you really like to just really cross off your list? Um, you know, there are always I think those those things that are um, more stressful for us at the holidays. Um, that we really don't enjoy doing, but we do them because, again, we've, we've, uh, um, you know, it's expect we think it's expected of us, or we expect it of ourselves. Um, and um, I'll give you an example here. I, um, <laughs> when it comes to decorating a Christmas tree, that's where my perfectionism really kicks in. And so, a lot of years ago, um, I said, you know, no more of this. Uh, fighting with the lights and getting everything just right. Um, and so I just decided I would do up some pretty baskets with lights and place them around the house. And then at the end of the holiday, they go back in their plastic tubs and they come out the next year. So these are some things that, you know, um, you know, to think about, just ideas uh, to, to get you thinking about, you know, how you might um, make your load a little lighter. And um, and it's okay again to to let go of some of these things. Um, but 
maybe you can delegate some of the things you've always done through the holidays, maybe baking or uh, some of the cooking, uh, whatever it is that, uh, again, that, you know, is really maybe a little more difficult this time. And then, you know, maybe there are more interesting and meaningful activities that are uh, not going to really um, uh, cost quite as much energy um, to do, but help you really enjoy the holidays. Um, you know, one thing I can think of is sometimes just a, a peaceful ride in the car to enjoy the Christmas lights through the neighborhood. Um, you know, maybe it's uh, some reminiscence and pulling out the photo albums and you know, with family and some things like that. Um, again, change it up however however it works for you and your family. All right, next. And again, as part of um, reducing your stress, it's certainly important to take a look at your your loved one's stress level and and what's going to help them enjoy the holidays. And you know what activities are they able to participate in? So one of the things I think that's really important to, to take a look at is your loved one's endurance. Um, you know, are, are they physically able to, um, you know, go through an entire day of activities? Um, if not, then how do you limit, you know, the the time um, that perhaps they're up and and maybe maneuvering around maps and that sort of thing? Um, and um, scheduling visits uh, from from other family um, or even travel. Uh, so something to take into consideration here. Um, and and then um, what is their actual tolerance for a lot of noise and you know, perhaps a lot of bustling activity around them? You know, sometimes this is very distressing, particularly for someone with dementia. And so. Uh, this is something that um, you, you might might take a look at in terms of maybe separating some of the activity within the household. Um, you know, if you've got children who are opening presents and toys and excited, you know, maybe that's an activity that uh, they do maybe at home with their parents and, and then they come for a visit. Now, whatever's going to make this um, a little more comfortable. Um, and then, you know, look for ways though, to involve your loved one um, that do match their abilities. Um, so they obviously are feel included and and also able to contribute. Um, and you know, sometimes it's it's this you know easy things, the small things. Um, maybe ask them to lead a prayer if they're able. Um, if if that's something that you would normally do, um, maybe they can help decorate cookies if they're sitting down. Um, and if nothing else, if they're not really able to physically participate, maybe put on some music um, because we, we know um, that this can be very um, um, enjoyable sometimes, even for people with um, you know somewhat advanced dementia, um, and can help them um, maybe even re you know in return to a place in time that uh, you know, they'll actually even um, share with you a little bit about. Um, and then preparing uh, family and friends, um, you know, regarding any changes in your loved one before they get there. If maybe they haven't seen your loved one for a while and they haven't been in the household, haven't been in and out, um, can make the, the whole um, visit go a lot more smoothly and, and kind of prevent some awkwardness there. And not knowing maybe how to interact with someone or recognizing that, you know, they, they may... Um, you not be able to find uh, the words to express themselves, or you know they may see a lot of equipment around and that sort of thing. Let family know just what to expect. No surprises here. And if you are, uh, you know, um, going to someone else's home, by all by all means, it's really important to uh, try to determine ahead of time what the accessibility is like in that household. Um, you know, nothing worse than getting there and finding out that you know the doorway is too narrow and you're not going to be able to get a wheelchair in, into the bathroom facilities, um, you know, or you know that there really isn't someone with the strength to maybe get someone in the house um, who is using a wheelchair. Um, so try to check those kinds of things out ahead of time. Um, and if you are considering traveling uh, long distance, um, and your loved one does have some mobility limitations, um, 
you know, will you actually need someone with you um, traveling? Will you maybe need to hire an aide or have another family member accompany you just so that there's two people along? Um, and if your loved one is likely to um, wander off, um, uh, do you need more eyes on them? Um, that's uh, something to be sure that your family understands. Um, that way, um, you know, no 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 real disasters there um and sometimes family you know again if they're not with you and your loved one uh, frequently you know it's easy to overestimate um you know if they can have a conversation with someone and everything appears fairly normal to them it's hard sometimes to wrap your head around the fact that there are changes in this person and they indeed could easily um you know get get lost so um, you may have to really impress that upon them, especially if uh, family might be staying with your loved one while you step out to run some errands or something. And if you're traveling, again, just take into consideration whether your loved one may become restless or anxious. Um, if, if uh, you know, maybe travel isn't a good idea, uh, maybe family will have to come to you. Um, and if you are traveling, um, you know, family again might be able to help you with that or you might be able to hire some agency assistance. And as far as travel, um, make sure whether it's just coming home from a care facility for the holiday celebration or whether you're going across country, try to take extra medications along. You never know when flights can get delayed and you know, or something comes up and, and somebody doesn't get back where they, they typically live. Uh, where their medications are. So this is a big one. Make sure that uh, you always have enough of the medications with you. Okay, next. So um, this slide really is just um, some simple ideas. Um, the idea here is to scale down holiday traditions. Um, you don't have to give up things entirely, but again, uh, just some ways to make it a little easier. and. I think uh, these days, um, really, uh, families um, really are often have, have different work schedules through the holidays, and and so I, I think people are increasingly more used to having to um, manage their holiday celebrations um, a little differently. Um, so maybe a potluck holiday meal rather than one person trying to take on most of the cooking. Um, certainly, these days um, through the holidays, many restaurants um, do a wonderful job of, of handling, um, you know, holiday meals. Uh, you can use a bakery, draw names for a gift exchange rather than shopping for everyone on the list. Uh, that can make it a little easier on the budget as well. Um, gift cards certainly make it easier if you don't have a lot of time to get out and go shopping. If you like to shop, then maybe um, that's where you bring in some respite help um, so that you can do the shopping you enjoy. Um, and increasingly, I know a lot of uh, large families are um, going together and making a donation to a worthy cause um, in the name of the family over the holidays. And, and certainly that is a, a very meaningful gift and, and much appreciated by, by these organizations. Um, and certainly, too, if you're, um, you know, if enjoying some of the old holiday movies or, you know, going to the Nutcracker has been kind of a tradition in your family, something like that, a production, you can always get these on, you know, DVD or even find them online to stream or whatever and get together and view them as a family and, and just enjoy them. That's another way to kind of scale down a little bit and just go easy on the decorating. Um, you know, maybe you enjoy someone else's lights uh, rather than uh, struggling to get up uh, all of your lights on the house uh, prior to the holidays. Uh, if you have family at long distance, you can uh, talk with loved ones on a speakerphone or maybe Skype with family. Um, and instead of, you know, having to, to uh, send out Christmas cards on a lengthy list. Uh, maybe you do a mass email, some things like that. Just just some ideas, and I'm sure you'll come up with some of your own there. Okay, next. 
And then most important here, I think, is to reach out for respite care. Um, and if you haven't heard that word before, and often um, it is new to people, um, this just means uh, respite equals relief. Um, and it is, and when we're talking about caregiving, it is a temporary relief from, from your caregiving responsibilities. There are many different sources of respite. Um, it could be family, friends, neighbors. But if you're talking about um, you know, having someone help you out with these things through the holidays, be sure and, and uh, let them know that you really could use some help early on. Um, that way they can get this worked into their schedule too. Um, you might use paid respite workers, um, would be home health aides. Um, they can come in and um, just um, pretty much provide a companion service or they may come in and do some light housekeeping or some personal care and let you step out um, or just take a nap if you need to do that. And then in many areas, there are adult day programs, adult day services, adult day care. We use a lot of different terms for that. But it's basically a center where your loved one can go for part of the day or a whole day. Um, they can have their new meal there. They have activities. And um, if there are medications that need to be administered, um, that can be done there too. And uh, but they are supervised, and it's usually during um, regular business hours in most areas. Uh, but it is a nice way to maybe get a whole day to to get done what it is, whatever it is you need to get done. And many of these services, there are programs all over the country that help with the cost um, of these services. Um, and um, you know, a good starting point is certainly you can um, go through your Family Caregiver Alliance or um, all of the area agencies on aging, such as mine, are linked uh, by um, uh, this website um, that you'll see there, the eldercarelocator.acl.gov. Um, this is provided. It's a service of the Administration on Aging. And uh, there are over 670 of this area agencies on aging in the U.S. Everywhere in the U.S. has an area agency on aging that serves it. Um, we just typically serve more than one county. Um, and so we can be starting points. Um, we're charged with developing funding and providing services for people 60 and older, and also to be a starting point for caregivers for people under 60 and finding whatever help they need as well to, to live as independently as possible in the community. So um, you can, by all means, um, use the Elder Locator to get started. And I know that the Family Caregiver Alliance has a, a similar um, service on their website as well there to, to help you find um, the services you need. Okay, next. So once you've an idea of um, what is manageable for you and maybe there's some changes that you think you'd like to make in the holiday celebration, um, the next step is really to, to share your thoughts with your family. And um, you know, this is really about just letting them know um, that, you know, how life has changed for you and your loved one. Um, and, you know, I always uh, encourage folks to kind of keep it kind of neutral here, your tone. Um, and um, you're not making demands. You're not, you know, trying to make anyone feel guilty. Um, this is just the facts. This is how life is for us. And this is what our daily routine is. And because of this, um, here are some changes that we think we, we need to make here for the holidays. And you can certainly invite them to um, you know, give you some suggestions. And you may actually um, come up with, you know, get some creative ideas. And you know, maybe, get, maybe you'll get some offers of help. Um, and you can you know, work these into whatever you're, you're planning um, and tweak your plan. Um, but you know, don't be um, don't be, allow yourself to be guilted into taking on something that more, that's more than what is comfortable for you. Um, no, just know that for some family members, you know, they really um, they really are um, going to have a difficult time uh, with changing the holiday traditions out, and um, that that you know that's really there. Um, that is up to them, and, and it's not um, something that you can totally take on. Um, you know, if you're um, giving some alternatives, um, then that's the most you may be able to do in this situation. 
but whatever it is, whatever you do, just do not accept any guilt over this. Um, you know, you're doing the best you can with this, and that's important to remember. Um, this is about being able to stay healthy and whole yourself through this. Which really leads to the next um, slide here. Um, and um, this is a strategy of stress management that is used a lot in counseling and one that I uh, very much wish I had had uh, many years ago during the holidays when I was caregiving. And um, I think I probably hit at least four of the um, conditions on this list um, all at once, and um, it wasn't pretty. Um, and since then, I have really um, believed that this um, this tool uh, is particularly useful at the holidays uh, when you're everybody's kind of running around at warp speed. Um, because I like the visual of coming to a halt, and um, it's easy to remember. You can use it. Anytime. It doesn't have to be the holidays. But what it does is it helps you. It's a check-in strategy. It helps you tune in uh, to your physical and, and your emotional state and recognize uh, when something's got to give, when something has to change. And sometimes we are so busy with our, you know, trying to get through our list um, that we have totally, um, you know, disengaged from thinking about our own physical uh, and mental state, and uh, we're just pushing on through. And this makes you stop and, and take a look at that when, um, and lets you know that perhaps, okay, um, it is time to try some of the um, practical strategies we talked about earlier in terms of scaling down and, and uh, so that you can, um, you know, get through the holidays um, and, and actually enjoy the holidays. So um, on the next slide here, um, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to start this kind of self-check-in and just go through it here. I don't know about you, but uh, when I'm too hungry, I get cranky. Um, and I know that when I get busy, sometimes I forget to eat and drink the way I should. And uh, the next thing you know, I'm a little more out of sorts than normal. And I think this is an, a very easy thing to have happen during the holidays when people are just really flying around. And certainly your energy bars are, are better than nothing uh, to kind of make sure that, you know, the blood sugar stays where it should be and and uh, you've got some energy to run on there. But um, what's most helpful here is if you can slow it down, uh, have a quiet, um, unhurried, um, satisfying meal, whatever that means to you, um, and... Um, you know, that that's really going to help you um, um, with both some physical and emotional nurturing. Um, that's a little bit of a time out. And you don't have to do the cooking for this. Um, you can order out. You can use a delivery service. Um, one thing you can do um, if, if family or friends ask how they can help, um, Maybe they could, maybe I just ask them to bring in a meal or two sometime during the holidays. Um, that would be a you know a really nice gift uh, for a caregiver through the holiday. Okay, and then the next thing we want to check in on is anger. Um, you know it happens for all of us, and um, but when it becomes a predominant response to everything that happens. Every every life situation, then it's it's becoming unhealthy, and it can potentially be de deadly. It it really does have physical consequences um, if it um, you know persists um, and um, you don't find an, a, a healthy outlet for it. Um, and so, one thing I think is important to keep in mind is that usually anger is going to be kind of a cover emotion. Um, and usually that underlying that is perhaps another emotion. Maybe it's fear, um, maybe it's frustration um, or, or hurt. And the first step in kind of managing this is paying attention to how often you feel angry. I know sometimes when I'm talking with caregivers on the phone and they're really, you know, really uh, have gotten to the point of burnout, um, and um, I kind of hear the, 
um, you know, maybe make a couple of suggestions or, um, you know, or ask some questions and, and they're met with a lot of um, uh, sarcasm and, you know, biting um, irony and hysteria, almost a hysterical laughter, then I know I've got somebody who's who's really, um, their stress is just over the top and something's got to give and we've got to get, get them some help, some way to find some relief. Um, so if you find yourself in that situation, you know, then by all means, you know, reach out for some help. Um, but in, in actually dealing with the specific anger in the moment, um, if you can identify what's underneath that anger, um, that that's your first first step in trying to figure out Okay, what do I do with it? Um, and I know that, you know, time to do this, time to get away, uh, to maybe have you know, a, an opportunity for some counseling or a sounding board is, is sometimes not there. But one, one thing that um, can be there for you, um, wherever you are, at pretty much any time, is just, you know, um, a notebook where you can journal a little bit and process through some of the emotions and um, particularly for a caregiver um, I think you know this might be a good way to to think it through and and see again you know what maybe do a little problem solving as to what what's going to help you with that Um, but definitely anger has to have a healthy outlet Um, and um, again, whether it's journaling, whether it's uh, someone, a good friend who can be a sounding board, whether it's professional counseling, um, and, what, and, and certainly um, it probably is going to come down to getting some practical relief in some way from from some of the um, responsibilities that you have, um, then you know that there's going to have to be a change, um, but a healthy one here. Okay. All right. Next. And at the holidays, uh, first of all, I think we need to acknowledge up front that, you know, again, what, what the media uh, depicts is often, you know, the ideal holiday and um, not the way the holidays play out for many people. And um, But for a caregiver, we also know that, um, you know, they're, you're very much at a higher risk for isolation and loneliness, and that's just by the nature of the job. And so during the holidays, you know, you're bound to make some comparisons to what you see in the media and 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 actually in many cases this just isn't the real picture anyway, so you're making comparisons to something that isn't accurate to begin with. Um but it compounds those that sense of loneliness. And um so first of all know that um you know the holiday traditions are different for every individual, every family anymore. And there is no one way to celebrate. Um, and um, sometimes, you know, on a Christmas morning, I'm going to use my own holiday as an example, maybe it's just a quiet walk in the woods is, is um, you know, a way to celebrate. But to to also get you know some more company in um, you know sometimes family and friends are a little concerned about upsetting uh, the routine in the household the caregiving routine and so you know what you may need to do is kind of encourage them to visit but let them know good times to visit and again what to expect um, of your loved one what to expect within the household uh, so that. Um, no surprises, and um, they can enjoy their visit, and everybody feels comfortable. And um, and then we know that, you know, again, if you're caregiving and perhaps you are, are no longer in, in the workforce and so you're not having daily interactions with um, coworkers um, and maybe have not been able to do some of the activities that you normally did as, a, as an outlet and and the social and the the you know the corresponding social um, uh, aspect of that um, has gone away. Um, you know we need connections to others certainly, and um, maybe just some time over the holiday set a goal, just a small goal um, of catching up with someone that maybe you've kind of you know you just haven't seen or talked to in a while, and fit it into your schedule where it makes sense for you. 
Um, you know, this isn't something to add more pressure. This is something uh, to just add in where it makes sense and where you have the time and maybe it's just, you know, you do uh, make a point of um, scheduling some respite and meeting someone for coffee, something like that. Okay, and along the lines of rest, um, next slide here. I don't think I can say enough how important um, getting some downtime in your day is. Um, it, it keeps your mind from spinning, um, and again, that's you end up more of your precious energy, and, and it helps you feel more con in control and more rested. And so this is about allowing yourself some time each day to just be. And uh, that means no phone, no computer, no TV. You're no stimulus, no outside stimulus, just and just allowing yourself to be in the moment. Now I know this um, sounds a lot easier said than done, and um, you may need to work you know, in the beginning, you may only be able to work this in for 10 minutes a day. Uh, but start there. Any kind of change that you make um, around any of the things we've talked about is, may have to be gradual. Um, and so then try to work up to at least 30 minutes a day. Uh, don't make yourself more stressed over any of these things that we've talked about. Um, again, it, it may take tweaking the plan. Any of any of the changes that you're making to your holiday celebrations or whatever, it may take some give and take, some flexibility on your end, some flexibility on family then. But again, keep working with it. Tweak it as you need to. And the same thing certainly is true here at downtime. And so for downtime, uh, just some, again, just give you some, some ideas here. Um, a cup of tea by the fire. Uh, sit outside in, in the crisp, cool air and clear your head a little bit. You can light a candle and just watch the flame flicker or watch a sleeping pet. That's one of my favorites. Something about that certainly can be very calming. But stillness clears your mind. Um, and ultimately, then, when you go back to whatever it is you are doing, um, I, I think you can focus better. So my slide here says rest your mind breathe. And yes, you can do this, um, even though I know it doesn't sound like it seems like it's possible with, uh, you know, perhaps all the all the responsibilities you have on your plate. Um, but again, little steps, baby steps. Um, okay. So, um, and along, again, um, talking about getting the rest you need. On the next slide, we're going to talk about sleep. And the best sleep is always going to be your deep, uninterrupted, restful sleep. Uh, we all have to have this, and we know that sometimes with caregiving, it's, it's really difficult to to get this to to happen. Um, sometimes you're trying to sleep around a loved one's schedule, um, you know, and, and your your sleep is broken in the night, um, and you're up and down, or maybe you're just having difficulty gearing down to sleep um, to get into um, a good restful sleep. So one way to um, um, kind of work with this is to schedule your sleep time. Uh, we don't think um, about doing that most of the time. Um, but I'm, by scheduling, I mean put it on your calendar. And this is the time I have set aside to sleep. And you need to kind of prepare yourself to gradually gear down for sleep, um, to relax a little bit. Maybe you lower lights and your activity level eases down a little bit. Um, but if you put it on your calendar, if you um, can schedule some respite time uh, from a caregiver, um, a home health aide or family, but stick to it. Don't, don't let anything else intrude on that spot on your calendar. That spot is set aside for your sleep. Um, try to do that. Um, and one point I'd like to make here too is during the holidays, if, particularly if you're using um, some uh, paid formal respite care through an agency or an organization, um, you may want to schedule that respite care early um, so that you're sure that um, you're covered there. 
And when we're talking about sleep, just keep in mind um, caffeine and nicotine um, are going to be stimulants and can really prevent you from uh, easing into a restful sleep. And even though um, we tend to think that alcohol will help us sleep, um, its initial effect is, is a sedative, but it can cause you to awaken later and, um, and have um, be somewhat wakeful the rest of the night. Um, so that can really intrude on a, a good deep night's sleep as well. Okay. Um, and then the next slide. So we talked about HALT, hungry, angry, angry, lonely, tired, or scared. And that is, um, again, we're trying to avoid. And so uh, when we're talking about scared, we may be talking more about anxiety than, than fear. Fear kind of sounds a little dramatic here, but there may well be some very well-founded fears in there. And, um, and it's um, often, uh, you know, it, it can really drive um, everything that we do um, can be driven by, by fear. Certainly that's pretty natural or human. And uncertainty um, is often uh, what lies underneath our fears. Um, and humans by nature are, are not typically very, uncomfor very comfortable with certainty, uncertainty. Um, and, uh, and for caregivers, um, you know, that can be a day-to-day -day reality. Um, and can become pretty ingrained um, and uh, kind of difficult to uh, to step out of and to manage. So um, some suggestions here. Um, first of all, you do need to kind of pinpoint what what you're thinking about and um, that is perhaps causing you to feel anxious or fearful. Um, and sometimes um, if the fear is unfounded. Sometimes it's very well founded. Um, if the concern is very real, then, then you need to seek some information and perhaps look for a solution to whatever the, the issue is. Um, with the holidays, um, you may be one of, I think uh, one example I want to use here is during the holidays. You know, it may be that you're, you're fearful of um, conflict with family, uh, particularly around caregiving issues, particularly if, you know, again, they haven't uh, been back for a visit recently. Um, and that can be a very real concern. So again, let's try some problem solving around that. Um, so think again about what you can do to head this off. Um, maybe you can postpone and ask and, and just let the family know that, you know, if, if this comes up, um, postpone the discussion around caregiving um, until a later date um, so that everybody can just enjoy the holiday celebration. Um, maybe then um, you just schedule a time to have a, an objective conversation. And that, that postponement can give you some time to get your thoughts together, maybe write down a list of the things you're doing day in and day out, and also um, a list of the things you need help with. Um, but what, whatever you find there, um, you know, once you've kind of um, arrived at what's uh, the base of the fear, um, share your concern with someone you trust. Um, that's another uh, way to kind of gain some perspective. Um, and, and again, a good sounding board. Um, and, and then do some problem solving around it. Um, and then if, again, back uh, to the example of um, you know working with family around the caregiving issues, you know gather some information, uh, always you know be open to their suggestions and offers of help, and if it comes down to it, you can seek mediation. We do now have a, a service available in many areas, which is um, elder care mediation, um, and maybe that's what you're going to need. So on um, the next slide here, I just want to end with saying that through the holidays and, and beyond, uh, please keep in mind that you are body, mind, and spirit. And all of these aspects of your humanness require nurturing um, so that you can remain a healthy, whole person. Uh, so tune in to yourself. Use the HALT strategy to, to tune in, uh, figure out where maybe some changes are needed. 
if you're struggling with changes, making some changes there, then there is help. Please reach out and and know that well, too. Um, it is surely um, you know uh, obvious that with the responsibilities you have, uh, that um, some of these things again are are not easy to do to try to uh, relieve your stress. Uh, but it is about again practicing in some cases um, and keeping at it. Uh, don't let go. Do um, you know? Do tr- keep trying. Uh, tweak your your schedule, whatever it is. Be flexible, but keep working at it till you get the changes worked in there that are really going to make. Um, the holidays and the rest of your time um, as pleasant and and smooth as possible so that you really can enjoy life. All right. And so the last slide, I just wish you all a very peaceful holiday season. And I thank you for joining us today. I'd be happy to take questions. Perfect. Well, thanks so much, Patty. Uh, I was very happy to get Patty uh, on the line with us this afternoon, specifically on this topic, so everyone could have a little bit of time to prepare. And, and she did, definitely did mention the, the value in preparing, especially for if you're scheduling paid respite. So I was very happy she's able to spend this afternoon with us. We do have a little bit of time for questions. So I think we should get right into it. First off, let's see, we have a listener who uh, has has uh, has a question about in the best way including all generations and family celebrations. I guess this would include children, nieces and nephews, grandchildren, also, of course, adults, maybe younger adults, millennials, and then the uh, people, uh, people a little older. So uh, I know, Patty, you talked about this question a little bit. I guess I would maybe want to change a little bit in that. Would you have any recommendations for younger children, may, maybe say 12, 12 and younger, in terms of uh, explaining to them how their maybe grandparent or great uncle might be a little bit different now this Christmas season versus in years past uh, before they might have uh, progressed in their uh, a, a dementia condition? Well, with children, I, I I think you know obviously it depends on, on where they are age wise and what they're able to to understand. But I think the key is to let them know ahead of time to expect some changes and describe what they're what they're um, maybe going to encounter um, interacting um, and maybe that they're going to need to slow down. Maybe they're going to need to um, you know speak a little more clearly. Um, you know, maybe they're going to need to um, make their uh, visit a little shorter um, or do some uh, less uh, physical activity um, with, um, you know, whoever their loved one is that's having some changes. Um, but the main thing is just to, uh, well before they actually are, are there, um, you know, give them some suggestions maybe on what what um, their loved one is able to enjoy. Um, give them some cues, um, and, and that may help too. Okay, perfect. Thanks. And uh, a little bit of a related question in terms of maybe a younger younger group interacting with an older person with dementia. You mentioned before that sometimes the the noise and the the excitement and the larger uh, slightly different settings might be a little bit uh, stressful for someone with a living with dementia but are there also possible benefits of this uh, this kind of so- socialization with the person living with dementia maybe with a, a larger group or or maybe uh, getting getting some some form of socialization sure absolutely there are benefits and it's really all about pacing um, yourself um, and and whether it's children or adults for that matter uh, with a loved one, um, it's about finding that right pace and and um, again I think the primary caregiver can go a long way toward um, helping everybody find that um, by letting them know what their loved one um, experiences day to day or or how they live their life day to day. Uh, what their routines like, what they what they tend to enjoy, what they don't enjoy, uh, but again, it's it's about preparing them, uh, the f- rest of the family, 
uh, to help them uh, find that balance there. But certainly I, I think we what we see sometimes is that when family comes that maybe their loved one that hasn't seen for a while, they really can kind of rise to the occasion and um and you may see for a little while um you know that they're actually um much their their abilities improve that they're actually much more um uh, able to function for a while just because um they look forward to this and they sort of um um anticipated it and and uh, kind of geared themselves up for it so definitely there's some benefits Perfect. And uh, let's see, I have two questions kind of related to memory care or maybe a nursing home. The first one would be ways to include someone who uh, is maybe living in a nursing home in, in family traditions. Are there? Do you have any suggestions in terms of uh, including someone who might be in a nursing home to, to keep them a part of the holidays, the holiday celebrations, the holiday traditions? And then the other one would be is the listener has a little bit of a worry about spending, in their words, enough time with their parent who is in a memory care facility. Is there a way to gauge in terms of what enough time or the, the right amount of time would be so they're not, they don't feel like they're neglecting their, um, their parent? Okay. I'll start with your first question here. Uh, in, in terms of um, helping someone in a care facility can stay connected to the holiday um, celebration. You know, you can decorate the room. You can, you know, bring in maybe a small tree. Many facilities um, um, have uh, private um, dining areas where a family can bring in a meal and and have a, uh, a ho- you know the holiday meal together. You can do it on birthdays or or, or major holidays. Um, that's a couple of things you can can do. Um, if you are thinking about bringing a loved one home um, or to a, to a family member's home for the holidays, um, be sure that you can manage this um, safely. Um, you know, if the individual needs to some help with transfers and that sort of thing, are you physically able to do that? Um, or if they're going to need some help um, toileting and that sort of thing, then you know. It's, it's, is whoever's going to be doing that comfortable with doing that? And again, be sure that you know you understand the medication regimen and and have all of the medications needed if you're going to try that. Um, and um, also, depending on where you live in this country, um, you have got to be sure that uh, they've got the appropriate clothes um, if you're going out there in cold weather too, um, and whether or not they really can um, adapt to that. Um, sometimes. Um, if someone's been in a facility and you know, for a, for a while and you try to to um, do the you know, holiday um, out of the facility at home, it make they can be more uneasy than really enjoy it. So you want to be sure that that they feel comfortable with that too. Um, and as far as spending um, time with a loved one in a, a memory care unit, I think that um, depends a lot on on their level of awareness and. You know what is a quality visit uh, for them and for you, um, and um, I don't know that there's any one clear answer to that. It it truly um, depends on um, what they're able to enjoy. Um, but I do know that sometimes um, just even taking in uh, some uh, beautifully realistically illustrated books um, for someone who's fairly advanced with dementia can prompt. Um, uh, some um, interaction uh, that can be um, sometimes some reminiscence um, and can uh, perhaps sometimes pull someone back who has somewhat withdrawn. So if you can take in some of those kinds of things with you or again, um, maybe some music that you know that they enjoyed that was particularly meaningful to them, there are different ways to reach um, someone uh, with dementia and, and to perhaps help them have some quality um, time, uh, whether they even, you know, really realize that it's the holidays or not. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I had, let's see, a question that you definitely touched upon, but maybe uh, could you, this listener could use a little bit more information about. They are trying to find that balance between having the, of course, traditional holiday celebration that they've had in the past versus 
kind of ignoring the entire season in an attempt to maintain this routine that they've, of course, spent a lot of time thinking about and troubleshooting and, and working on, so it's, it, it works kind of well for everybody. So I guess what would your recommendations be for in terms of finding that balance, paring maybe it down a little bit, but not completely in terms of holiday celebrations? Yeah, I think I would go back there to, again, scale scale things down to what's manageable. Um, you know, I know there's a temptation to scrub the holidays and and but I do think that sometimes uh, when you do that, um, you do feel you almost grieve it, and that's almost more painful than at least trying to have a little more, um, you know, a little um, softer, um, easier um, celebration, a um, little more low key perhaps than you have done in the past. Um, just look for the ways that you know keep it. Um, a little bit calmer and and not quite so much um, um, you know demand uh, for things like baking and decorating and that kind of thing. Um, you know, if you normally you know bake you know a ton of cookies for the church, well maybe this year you you know you you scale that back a little bit or you you hand it off to somebody else. Sometimes just um, you'd be surprised though when you go to um, um, uh, delegate some of these things. Um, you'll find that maybe there's some folks out there that w- that would like to try their hand at some of the things that you've always done. Um, so, you know, it, again, I think if you can scale it down rather than give it up completely, you're gonna um, you're gonna feel better about it. Okay, perfect. I think we have just time for a couple more questions. I have one listener who. It looks like it is. They're probably taking care of a sibling, or perhaps a. Yeah, it looks like most likely a sibling, and this person they're providing care for has dementia, and they're frequently asking about their mother and the father, who are both deceased. In terms of, you know, where are they? When are they coming? Are they here? And, and, and questions like that. And I guess during the holiday time, it's particularly. Uh, it's a question that comes up very frequently, and is a kind of difficult thing to broach from the caregiver. So, would you have any? Any recommendations on how they might uh, how they might manage this question and, and, and manage this person? I think um, when we um, you know often we it, it's not obviously unusual to to have uh, repetitive questions like that from you know if somebody does have dementia and there are some different ways you can approach that. Um, one would be to just kind of um, try to figure out what what the emotion is rather than it and address that excuse me address that rather than um the the concrete question um sometimes you know someone is just a little bit anxious or uh, uneasy and just reassuring them maybe you know getting them a glass of milk or um, a snack or something um, maybe distracting them with an activity I know this can be um, you know, really nerve-wracking sometimes when you tried, you know, been, you know, listening to the same question you know, ten times, and you know, I don't think um, you can um, totally, you know, you can't ignore it. I think the best bet is to try to to distract someone. Uh, I know one caregiver who, um, you know, just uh, would put her you know, mother in the car and they go for a drive around the block. Um, but um, just whatever seems to, to fit um, uh, your loved one's needs at the time. Um, you know, uh, I have was in a situation where um, I had an old, older um, lady who um, was missing her sister and everybody around her in the facility knew the sister had passed away and she was you know, repeatedly asking for the sister. And every time that they would respond, they would respond with, well, don't you know your sister died? Well, then she would re-experience the grief all over again. And that was just horrific. Um, You don't want to put anyone through that. Um, So uh, finding some little activity to get them involved in or, or distracting them in some way or um, seeing if there's something they may be, may be uneasy about, um, you know, um, I think that kind of thing is is how you can best address that. And if and it's understandable um, that you might get, you know, frustrated and angry and and 
lose temper a little bit with this and just know that's normal. Don't beat yourself up about it. Um, you know, you're human. Perfect. And we have one final question that I wanted to ask. This is a caregiver whose father is in hospice right now. They're worried of him that he might uh, pass away very soon on his birthday is actually the 24th. Or they're, they're not sure if he's he's um, going to make it through his birthday or maybe the Christmas or New Year's season. In, in terms of someone in that, that situation, do you have any recommendations on, on what they should do for plans? If they should maybe can kind of continue on or if they maybe normally would visit family, what, what might you recommend in, in this situation? Uh, well, first, I'm, I'm sorry about the situation here. And, and um, I I would say, you know, they're not knowing, you know, the specifics of um, what your loved one's endurance is and that sort of thing. Um, traveling may not not be, um, you know, um, something that's physically comfortable for them. Um, I think um, if you can have a conversation with your loved one, let them tell you, um, you know, what they would prefer uh, for the holidays, especially, I know there's a lot of pressure that it could potentially be the last holiday. Um, if they're able to let you know how they would like to spend it, and um, and that is realistic and, and manageable, maybe with some help, uh, then try to try to make that happen. But if, um, you know, if it's not, then, um, then I would say you're going to have to modify your plans a little bit and, and just maximize whatever you can that you think your, your loved one really wants to hang on to and enjoy. Okay, perfect. Sorry, it was a, a bit of a tough, uh, tough final question, but I definitely wanted to, definitely want to ask you that one. Um, well, I'd like to thank everyone for participating in today's webinar presented by Patty Callahan. Uh, RFC webinars are free. We do them usually about every other month, and you can find more information on our next webinar on our website. We do archive them. It takes about uh, four weeks to get them on our YouTube channel. But otherwise, thank you, Patty, for joining us today. I really appreciate um, you spending the time. Uh, the webinar is now concluded. We hope to all see you for the next one and wish you all a great afternoon and if we don't see you before, a uh, restful and manageable holiday season.